From Erie's own government access, Channel 9, from the City Hall Council Chambers, it's time once again for the Taxpayers Hotline Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your host... And this is Councilman Kaz Kwiatkowski, and I expecting a guest, but I don't know if he's going to make it. But we'll try the show for a while and if it, uh, and see what happens. So uh, once again, feel free to call. Uh, you can talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, any subject you want. Just keeping the bounds of good taste, and that's all we ask. And uh, with that, it's been an interesting week, and. Uh, Hopefully, you know, things are going to start getting better. We had our comprehensive plan, which came out, and we had our first public hearing. won't be the uh, last one. We'll have uh, many more. Uh, we're hoping at least, uh, at least hopefully two or three more to get the public response. The initial public response wasn't bad, but uh, that was a quick notice meeting, and uh, we, uh, we would like to take the meetings, I believe, out into the uh, – the area's affected a little bit more, so hopefully we'll, we'll hear some responses uh, pro and con. And uh, the plan as a whole is, is a guide, as we said earlier. Go ahead, caller. Go ahead, caller. Hey, good day, Cass. Uh, hold on, I'm having trouble hearing you. Hey, good day to you. Yep, you too. Now you're okay. Hopefully you had a good Father's Day. Well, yeah, I got my present early. You did? Yeah, see, I'm wearing my shirt. I'm a long-suffering Cleveland fan, and uh, last night was a good night for us. That's great. I'm thinking, you know, we talk about trying to get jobs in the Erie. And, of course, there's a fiasco that was just recently done down at City Hall there with uh, the um, HUD money. Right. Is it possible that, uh, you know, they, they want to try to get the kids off the street from violence? Could they get brought in with the HUD money to help renovate some of those blighted properties that, say, one of the um, uh, different trade unions, the electrical trade or the plumbing or the uh, carpentry trade unions, uh, work hand-in-hand -hand with those kids and help restore some of those houses that are blighted down here to make them usable again, uh, you know, and using the HUD program as part of that uh, operation. That way the kids are brought into it, they're given or being introduced into a trade as well as... Uh, well, some of the HUD money is used for blight now. Uh, not a, not a you know not as much I think as the public would like, but uh, that's something that council is going to look at. Uh, we decided we want to look at that next year when when the funds are allocated to see if we can spread the money around to, to some other programs. Well, I, don't, but, I, I don't know about the other. They talk about basketball. I mean, sports are mm -hmm. fine, but the kids need to learn more than just. They need to have some kind of a trade in which they can uh, make themselves a living off of, too, besides, you know, the sports area. Well, I think, you, you, you know, you'll have some issues there, and I think none of them are insurmountable, but, you, of course, you'll have the problem of the, the kids will have to be uh, old enough to work, you know, uh, in a project like that. Oh, well, they'll be under supervision, so yeah. even if they say they start at the age of 14 or uh, 14 to 16, they can still probably do that. I don't know what the regulations are on that, but... That's not a bad idea, like, you know, trying to work with the unions on an apprenticeship, sure. and that's that's probably a project that's going to take more than one or two years to figure out, but, uh, no, I'm not against, I wouldn't be against a program like that. In fact, you, you see it a lot with programs like where they, uh, the community builds houses, you know, uh, under volunteer circumstances, what do you call that program? Uh, you know, where they come in and they build homes, Doc? What do you call that? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Humanity, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, why we couldn't do it with, uh, you know, if, if we would sit down with the unions and uh, and try to get a project. Of course, it's going to be, uh, you know, we got to start finding some money for for these programs. A lot of the money that used to come down from the government is not there anymore. So it's, it's going to have to either come locally or, you know, which is going to be... Uh, There's not as much money going into that as you know. The unions are suffering too a little bit. They've been they've been cut back. If you look at uh, 
just locally. Look at what happened when GE uh, cut back on employment. You, you've seen the United Way announce that their giving was, was down low all of a sudden. No, and the unions are, uh, they're getting decimated more and more. Uh, you know, they, in the old days they might have handed out a lot of money, but there, there's not a whole heck of a lot of money now going going out to campaigns as much as you would think. Well, another area that I'm wondering about, you know, we've been getting, we seem to have become more and more a motorcycle city. We have uh, that roar on the shore, and I noticed just that I did not too far from scooters, the higher in a number of motorcycles uh, sitting around in that area. They, they pretty much fill up the parking lot right around the bar there. Right. Uh, why can't we maybe encourage uh, some kind of a motorcycle building company to come to Erie and set up a factory here for mo- making motorcycles or parts for motorcycles? That would get some employment coming out here, you know. Oh, you're talking about, who was it, who was it that was out of York? Was that Harley Davidson? And that, and that goes right down to our our economic development people and the state, you know, trying to bring into business. I, I remember they almost lost a plant in York when when Harley Davidson was uh, thinking about moving out. Yeah. And so there's a lot of issues, both state and local, as to why businesses won't move here. I mean, you saw it locally when the brewery denounced they didn't like our tax base in the city. Our, our, you know, our taxes, so they decided to move to Harbor Creek. And you see it on a state level when uh, Hershey Foods was thinking about moving out of Hershey, uh, and we, we don't seem to begin the business. So a lot of that's got to be done on the, not only the state level, but even on the local level with incentives. And I'm, I'm not sure who's out there to build motorcycles, but yeah, it's, that's, that's a, that again is like that you would think our economic development people would be on there. with me, but go ahead. Well, yeah, that, well I, I think I'll let it go. Oh, I think well, well, issues would be plenty for you to, to pass around give, and if anybody wants to talk about them. Give me an idea of what you were thinking about. Uh, I'll talk to you later about it. All right. uh, you got to give me a call sometime. I keep looking forward to a for call from you, but I don't hear from you. Well, I'd be, I get pretty well tied up, but if you want to talk about that, go ahead. We don't. Uh, nobody's going to get mad at you. Uh, I'll talk about it later. Okay. We'll see you. Uh, the caller brings up a lot of good points about economic development. And uh... go ahead, caller. Go ahead, caller. Hi, uh, I have a few questions. Sure. Um, I was listening to the uh, council meeting on the fifteenth of June. Okay. They were talking about the blight in the city and the drugs and drinking and whatever. Right. I was just wondering where does uh, anybody, I don't know, uh, where do they consider downtown Erie to be? You know, from where to where? Okay, if you go by what the downtown improvement district calls it, uh, in fact, they, they did a recent uh, survey themselves and they divided the downtown into, I believe it was four sections. It starts at the Bayfront, and it goes up to approximately, uh, well, I don't want to misquote myself. Uh, I think it goes up to at least 14th Street, possibly 18th. Okay. And then it goes usually uh, about a block. It goes for sure from uh, Peach mm-hmm. or Sassafras over to about French Street or German. So it's, it's a pretty encompassing area. Okay, so it's quite quite a ways. Okay, mm. then I have another one. Yes. Um, I live on East Ninth. Now, right across the street from Mid City Towers. Okay. Alice Apartments and Tolio. 
studio apartment. There is a business that is opening soon called the Emergency Room. It is a bar and grill right in the midst of all these high rises for the elderly. Hmm, on East 9th. Yeah, East 9th Street in State, you know. Yes. And it's right across the street from Mid City Towers. They're making it now. It's called the Emergency Room, and it is a bar and grill. Is that on West 9th, ma'am? Pardon me? Is it on East 9th or West 9th? Well, I live on East 9th. Across the street is West. So it's West. <laughs> okay, so it would be across from Tulio Towers? No, it is across from Mid City Towers. Okay, Mid City Towers. What was there before? Samir's. Oh, okay. Yes, and that was closed down but had a bar in there also. Yeah, that's the one where it was on right on the corner, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Now it's called the emergency room. Wow. And all these drunks and loud everything will be there constantly right in the middle of all these elderly apartment buildings. I don't understand that, how it is allowed to happen right here. That's why I ask, we're like, where does, uh, you know, downtown Erie start? Mm -hmm. Because we, we all live here, and yet now we have a bar right in our face that there will be drunks. You can't walk down the street now. I, I think you're right. They, that is down, uh, definitely downtown. Yes. And uh, what you need to do, there's a, if you can get a hold of one, or you can talk to me and I'll get you a copy. It shows you the the vision of downtown, what, what they envision, you know, the four zones. Yeah. And well, that, that's not even really my... No, no, but what it tells you is that uh, most of the bars are actually on the south end, you know, down by a Junior's Comedy Club and that? Yeah, there's, that's, they are, but, but not now. No, when they get over to your place, we've had complaints, I've had complaints at least before about some of the neighbors in the high-rises and they would have outdoor music uh, at various places. Yeah. And, you know, in the comments you get from a lot of the, the people, uh, even in the administration and other places, is, well, you know, it's downtown and it's a... But, you know, there's got to be a balance. Yes, because we're all elderly. Right. I mean, that's a, you know, that's a problem we created when we decided to put elderly apartments down there. Yeah. You know, you, you know, if you had, like some cities where you have, uh, what do you call, uh, condos for young people, maybe that's not an issue, you know. Right, yeah. But it definitely is an issue on this and... Yeah, well, I've been listening to Amy on, on uh, the show, you know. Yeah, and she's leaving, by the way. Oh, she is? Yeah, she told us, she announced to council that she's moving. Well, I can see why. And uh, she was actually, you, you probably, I don't want to go into it on the air, but she had some issues with uh, the owner of the building I think she's with. Yeah, she, she's at Palace. Yeah, and she, uh, she was not happy, but... There again, you had somebody that really cared, you know. Right. Yes, she did. Yes, and, you know, now, you know, you don't have her. But I think we, we have to be very careful when when we start talking about downtown and block parties and all that. You know, there's room for everybody, but there's also, you have to kind of work with the merchants that are there, some of the restaurants, you know, and you have to kind of take the community that you created into into, you know, well, there are no restaurants right here on East 9th, West 9th, 10th, whatever. No, they they tend to be either on uh, North Park Row or... Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah but, but I'm concerned about the three apartment buildings with this new bar. Yeah, I think we have to be careful when we allow them to go outside. They have to, you know, they have to remember their neighbors of the, their, their members of the neighborhood. Yeah, that's they, what, And another, I have one more question, then I'll be done. Uh, do you remember when that uh, Clara's Way was made and that lady got that house fixed up for free because she took care of children? Right. Whatever happened to her and, and all that? Well, the house was still there, but it, she's been kind of quiet for the last... I don't know if the news media is not uh, covering her or... You know, but yeah, you don't hear anything about her anymore. No, not at all. I don't know who she's taking care of, 
probably no one. She does go to bingo a lot. Well, I don't know. Like I say, they've, they've been real quiet about covering her. Yes. Usually, usually they keep those stories going every couple of years, you know. Just wondering, because she got all this free stuff, and then she just, like, disappeared, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy. But my main concern was, like I said, the bar. And I think, I, I agree with you, and I think, you know, what we need to do, and I know they're afraid to uh, make it look like we're getting, like, tougher and stuff, but, you know, as with all things, we, we have to keep things under control. You know, you don't need, uh, you know, if you have uh, block parties and stuff, you know, have a reasonable time for them to, you know, do do their thing. And, uh, you know, try to keep the, the the places where we do have a tendency to maybe have a problem, you got to kind of keep them under control a little bit. I don't think anybody, you know, nobody really cares if you if you have these nice places where people go in, they have a drink, they have some nice music, everybody leaves, you know. It's when you have the trouble afterwards where, yeah. you know, that's what you don't need. Nope, there was enough problems there when Samir's had it. We don't need this. I mean, we, you know, there's three apartment buildings. There was no consideration, I don't think, but... Okay, I think I covered all my bases today. Yeah, I think you have a valid point. And uh, there, there, is a, there is a downtown improvement district that uh, Mr. Uh, Buckner is in charge of. Mr. Who? Uh, Bu Buchner. Buchner. Yeah, I, I'll get you his number if you you know want to give me a call off the air. Okay. And I'll get you the, the downtown improvement district number. And if you if you have a lot of people, you can venture concerns. You know. So, because what, and, what? Okay, now what's the number I call off the air? I don't have that. Oh, you can call me at. Uh, uh, wait a little bit before I get home, but you can call me at. Uh, my home number is eight two five. Seven six zero one. Okay, I will do that. I won't Thank be. You uh, very much for listening. Yeah, I'll be home a little late today because I got a couple errands to run. That's fine. So, like, if you want to call me after supper sometime, that'd be good. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. And uh, just wait. Well, we probably want to get a phone call right away, but oh, there we go. Go ahead, caller. That's one uh, nice looking t shirt. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I, I'm not one of those, uh, what do you call it, uh, pile on people. Yes, you are. No, no, I was there for. Well, you ought, to, you ought to be happy because it's been a long time in coming, so. Uh, I, I told some young man, he, we, were, we were actually at. Uh, Sarah's uh, uh, morning, you know, yesterday morning. Oh yeah. Hey, I took my mother over there, and we, had, you know, and we were talking, and, and this young man goes, uh, "Oh, you're a Cavs fan?" I said, "Yeah, yeah." And he goes, "So am I." He said, "It's been a long time." And I said, "How old are you?" And he tells me, he's, you know, twenty some years old. I said, "Well, it hasn't been as bad for you as it has been for, you know, for me." He said, "Yeah, my dad tells me about it. He was," I said, "Your dad and I were probably about sixteen when the Browns won." Yeah. And that's like 50 years, you know. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad it happened to the city of Cleveland. It, you know, they deserved it. And it's been a long time. Now, I want one more thing to happen. It really made me happy. What's that? They eat goat in Chicago. Oh, you, you mean with the Cubs? Yeah. And they look like they got a nice team this year. And let's hope they wind up eating goat for a change. Is that what they said is going to happen? They're going to eat goat if they win? No. I would think so. Yeah, there was an old joke about that, wasn't it? Yeah, that's why they wouldn't let the GOAT come to the one last championship they were at. They, I, they banned him. I, I think, uh, you know, Cub fans are another group that's, you know, super loyal. Oh, yes. I Remember mean, old George Tutalian? Yeah. Up on 12th and Parade? He, he was the, the, the cigar store? Right. He was a Cub fan, and he, he used to eat GOAT all the time. Uh, well, you know, I, you got an open invite. I, I thought John Steiner was coming on. He must have got the time goofed up. Yeah, so, but... Uh, so you got, yeah, John, actually, I got a lot of people want to see you. You know, I looked over that comprehensive plan, and I think it's a good idea. But remember what, what it is. It's a... It's a, it's that, a plan. It's, right. a, it's actually a plan that's going to evolve. It's going to change, too. Well, sure it's going to change, but the whole thing, uh, there's too many whys involved with there. What do you mean? Who's and where's. Like, if the money doesn't come in right. to take care of it. If you don't get entrepreneurs wanting to get involved in this, it's going to revert back 
to the taxpayer again. Right. And that's the only part of it I didn't like. Because it's coming back to the taxpayer. Well, what he was saying was, in Erie, we tend to, uh, we tend to look to the state and federal to solve our problem. That's right. And that should not be the case. No, but the problem is, here, I'll give you an example, John. If, if we build, if, if the, and it, I'm not, these numbers will be off. Take the arena project, okay? The arena, let's say the arena is going to cost $20 million. And the state is going to give us 15. We do it at 15, correct? Yes. Instead of other communities, which will actually say, well, you know what, we'll find the 5 million. We'll do it right the first time, or we'll put the fluff in there, the things that make it different and make it, you know, nice. True. We don't. You know, we sat there with an arena that uh, doesn't have a team shop, doesn't have uh, offices, didn't have the uh, sports bar they intended, took out the escalator. Uh, are those things, like, really big? No, but they make it look nice. It makes it look first class, you know what? Well, yeah, and you've got, you got to get people to come in and want to invest their own money. Right, and the trouble is when we do sometimes, it doesn't work. Like, you know, we're still waiting for Mr. Scott to do his project. And the only project that seemed to be getting built are, except for Mr. Kennedy, you know, who's doing on his own, yes. it seems like there's always government projects. Gov Everybody was waiting for the Chris. You know, when I was a young man, a gentleman told me, don't wait for your ship to come in. Right. Swim to it. Well, you know, a lot of people ask, why is, it, why is Nick willing to do it in Summit, but not near you, you know? Because he's getting the break. Yeah, and, but, I mean, we're going to give them the same breaks. Here's the problem, though. You know, we're not going to give them the same amount of money that they did in Allentown. You know, Allentown, if you go downtown, they really, they, they mean, they tore half the downtown out. It's just like writing. Yeah, same thing. But, you know, you're right about it, John. But, you know, Buki points out in his plan that the, the, the big problem is that if, if we're probably not going to get federal and state money, that's drying up quick. Yeah, and we need X amount of millions of dollars. Yeah, so who's going to do it if if we can't talk, you know, like, well, for instance, you know, we talk Erie Insurance into doing things, and they are doing it, and they take their tax breaks, but, you know, at the end of the day, they're paying taxes. But now they're going in for a reassessment on their, their tax, which is going to knock it, if the, if the court approves it, right. 50%. And see, this goes to the core matter, which is we got too many nonprofits. True, and then again, we have the redevelopment office that sits on their hind feet, and it's not out there. Just like I saw the mayor said he was uh, help out there at GE. He can't help at GE. Government is not to make jobs. No, the only thing government can do is they have to. They have to go up to GE and they have to say, what is it that really you really want? And at the end of the day, John, we know what it is. Yeah. There's super tax breaks in Texas, and they have a right to work state. I mean, that's the bottom line. You know, I took a ride over 12th Street this morning, and I came along going east from out west. You go there, you see the Lord's Place is falling apart. Yeah. Look across the street, there's the park and ride and everything there. And then you keep going on and you find a few places. You get up to see the new auditorium, the cathedral's preps building. You've got their, their sports field there. And they are paying taxes on that. Well, they're, they're just paying a little portion. A portion yeah. of the eight and things like that. But I think they were embarrassed because, you know, the shape of the city is such that the other day they, they were asking me on the press about fireworks. And I said, look, you know, that's really not important right now. I mean, as much as I'd like to see fireworks on the 4th of July, who's going to pay for them? Well, I'll tell you, I've seen Sam's Club and Walmart and all that. Yeah. There's enough fireworks around. We don't even have to worry about fireworks. No, I mean, but, you know, I mean, much as I hate, but at the end of the day, you know, I ride around town and, you know, you know yourself, you look at your road. We, oh, we, boy. You want to blow them up in the air, the smoke, or do you want to fix? That's true, though. You know, the whole thing there is we used to have panel and we used to have the gas company and all those people, they would donate to it. Yeah, and then nobody's doing it. I mean, private... Getting and it, a bang for their buck. And, and like I told a reporter, I said, who's really complaining? The people who live outside the city limits that want to come in here? And see the fireworks, right? Yeah, well, you know what? Buy them in your own area. Or how about some of the gambling money we don't seem to get? Yeah, well, you'll, the little the communities will 
have it. Lawrence Park will have it. Wesleyville will have it. Uh, Nelson will have it out there. There's yeah, go out to, of it to go around. I forgot about that. Go out to Waldemar, right? So, you know, support that guy that has a nice business out there. That's true there. But, so, you know, I, uh, I do want to give a kudo to the police department. We had a, a gentleman wandering around this morning, his Parkinson and all that, and uh, we, he was banging on my front door to get in. My wife thought I locked myself out. Oh. <laughs> but then again, uh, a couple of officers came up and a street sergeant, and boy, they treated this man like he was royal. They yeah. did a wonderful job. We had a police officer got a little injured today, too. Uh, they had that uh, pole that fell up on Pine Avenue. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he, he got uh, shocked a little bit. S-C-H-O-C-K-E-D? Yeah. So, I mean, we're, I, I understand he's doing okay, but... You mean the one that took out the service on East 38th Street? Uh, Pine Avenue, actually. Yeah, probably did take it on East 38th. I thought there was cables down and everything else. Yeah, it happened up on uh, near Essex and Pine up there. Yeah. But, so. uh, yeah, you know what nothing to fool with. No, we get some good policemen out there that do their job, you know. Yes, and I see we've, we've hired our last three. Huh? Yeah, well, you know, a lot of the old timers, I call them old timers, but they're younger than me. They're starting to leave. Yeah, well, these, these, these police officers, my God, these youngsters. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you get old, right? Yeah, everybody looks, yeah, when they talk about, when you're watching sports and they go, a grizzled veteran, and you look at him and you go, What? He's 30-some years old, you know? Yeah. But, uh, but no, you, how'd you like to... Overall, John, your comments about the comprehensive plan are pretty good. But uh, it's, uh, it's a place to go. But, you know, this, this gentleman, he's comparing the wrong place. What do you mean? You can't compare Atlanta, these you know, other places, apples... Apples. We're not getting apples to apples. We have lemons to limes. Yeah. I, well, I think what he points out is that, you know, while we'll... And you've been to Chicago, right? No. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. Like, Chicago has Navy Pier. We're never going to have Navy Pier, but... I've been to Buffalo. Well, I, you, we could have some a little less than they do, maybe, you know, by the size of our town. Buffalo's coming back. It seems to be. that They had it on TV the other day about uh, housing is a little bit stronger there now. Well, they're, they're rebuilding, and they're bringing in that. I think our problem, John, and I, I said this at the council meeting, but, uh, uh, we got too many people that lost faith in the city. They moved away. Uh, they moved to the suburbs, and even our own people that derive a good income. The jobs are going away, and they're not coming back. They're, 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 they're going to... The, but even the people we pay in government have left, and they go out to the suburbs. The hourly rate is too much. It's lower than it used to be, and you have to work twice as long to get what you were getting back in the early 2000s. But uh, it's it's going to hopefully, hopefully get better. But the restaurant I told you about last week, it's a Thai restaurant. Where is it? It's right across... Uh, you know, as you're coming down Peak Street there, where you have that great big sign before you get to uh, uh, Lee Calm. Yeah. It's on the right-hand side. A Thai restaurant. That'd be pretty good. Yeah, if you like that kind of food. Oh, I do. Do you really? Yep. You must like kimchi, then. I, you know, you, you talk about kimchi. I just had some down in Virginia. They had an ethnic festival. Yeah. And they had some... Uh, people from the Korean community down there. Yeah, I had some kimchi, and uh, they were laughing because I, man, it was uh, it was pretty good. Well, you got two types. You got the real hot, and you got the mild. Yeah, this was not mild. <laughs> it, it's a real biter. Well, we, we had some people down here that used to make it in the basement. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was pretty good. We had a little kimchi festival. I tried to make, uh, well, not kimchi. I tried to make sauerkraut before I went to the Johnstown Flood. And my wife forgot to keep the fan on and keeping it cool. And it got ripe and the bugs start coming. Uh, not good, huh? Not good at all. So but, you, you like kimchi too, John? Pardon? Are you a kimchi fan? Yeah, I've, I've, I've tried it. it and it's, it's, it's very tasty. Yeah, we don't want to tell them how they really make it over there, though. Well, uh, yeah, they bury it for years. Yeah, we don't want to tell you what they bury it under, though. <laughs> yeah, you got to keep the heat. 
Well, sure. It's just like making prosciutto. That's how they do it, too? Well, you get a great big pork butt, and you salt it with rock salt, and you put it in a basket, and you turn the fan on and keep it in a cool cool area, and you cure it with the, the rock salt and pepper, and you keep turning it. And after about six weeks or six months, it's done. But you got to keep that air circulating. That's interesting. You're going to have to come on the show, you know, that people want to see you. Yeah, I'll have to do that. I, I, I talked to one of your friends upstairs there, and she said I should. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Oh, that cute little thing. So, well, we'll let you go. And I didn't hear you on the Italian hour yesterday. You must have been off. No, I do uh, I do two two weeks a month. Well, that's what everybody does. we got a little rotating crew. Yeah. It works out nice. Yeah, what, what did you ever find out about buying uh, repository sales if they buy the land? Is it conf- con- is it added on to the lot they own next to it as a tax base, or is it just a separate lot? What do you mean? If, if they buy it? And t- if they buy it, is it included in their frontage for their home, total home, if it's close and adjacent to their property? I think it would, but I can find You know what? I forgot to find out for you. But uh, I, I would see if, if it was right adjacent to you, be, it becomes part of your property. No, I heard something on but, the... But, it, I mean, it would still be separate as far as if you wanted to sell it, you know. I, and I heard something the other day on your, your council meeting that garbage fees are not taken off and things like that. I didn't know that. I think, well, we probably don't normally do that. Uh, that would that would probably have to be something negotiated, but... Well, whoever buys the property has to get updated on the garbage fees. But that's why all those properties have had liens on there for years, you know. In fact, I went through the thing today, or, or yesterday, and there's still quite a few people, and there's quite a few good-paying jobs, and there's still some city employees that are in arrears with their garbage fees. Yeah, what do you, what, uh, we haven't had a report update. Uh, we're, we're due to have another one. What happens is they're saying that they're taking care of the old bills, but then they're, they're adding new ones on. So it's rotating. It's not, but it's not... It's not, it's not real high. Well, in the old days, what we were doing, we weren't making any progress on the old bills. Oh, well, they just kept letting them go and go and go. So now they, they at least, even if they're, at, like, they're paying the back ones, then the, their water doesn't get turned off. Well, I've seen a couple, you know, most, most of them are, like, uh, two and three quarters behind. Yeah, that's why, as long as they can, because the threat is still there that we will turn off the water, you know. True. You know, I, I just noticed something different again. Now we've moved our Erie Bank to Massachusetts. Which one's that? To pay, the, to pay for your water bills and everything. It used to be in Clearfield. Yeah, I have to ask them why they did that. They probably got a better deal. Why don't they get a local bank here in Erie? Well, I think they put it out for bid, but a lot of the local banks don't come in at a good rate. So it's... We, recently we did, uh, we were looking for some banking mm-hmm. uh, concerning some funds at the city. You'll be surprised that... A lot of the local banks either don't bid or don't come in at a, re- at a good enough rate. And they're afraid of your bond rating. But that the trouble is, like, you know, we try to do business locally, but sometimes if, if the difference is too much, you, you can't justify going local. That's true. you got to go where it's at. Yep. So, all righty, have a great day. Yeah, call back if nobody else does, you know. We will. Yeah, John talking about the comprehensive plan. That's going to be a long process there. Go ahead, caller. And, uh, let's just see if you can check on something for me. Sure. Last week, I uh, turned in a complaint to the city of Erie about one of their employees out at Downing Golf Course. He was um, uh, uh, he was complaining to uh, a golfer who was actually abusive in his um, manner towards one of the customers out at Downing Golf Course. Right. And um, I was witness to it, so I went online and I complained about it, asked the city to get back to me. I went out to Downing Golf Course. I talked to the folks out there. I called Downing Golf Course again later, talked to the manager, did have a nice conversation with him. But as of this time, nobody from Downing Golf Course or the city of Erie has got back to me about why a city employee 
verbally abused a customer who happens to be an 18-year-old who is a private in the U.S. Army. So the complaint has been registered. If you could check and find out, and it's, all the details are there and the contact information, you could ask them why they haven't gotten back to me. And uh, how long ago was this? Uh, this was last uh, Thursday. Uh, not this Thursday. You mean this Thursday? Uh, this past Thursday. Okay. Uh... Maybe they're still looking at it. I'll, I'll try to find out for you. Could you call me off the air and if you would like to talk to me privately? Uh, no, that's fine. I just uh, would like the city to follow through. Uh, they, I know that they have made some contact with Downing to get their side of the story. Yeah. And the gentleman at Downing uh, was, like I said, the, the manager out there, I believe his first name was Frank, was good enough to, to listen to my story uh, side of it. And he was very good about listening to it. But um, when, when uh, did this this happen on Thursday too? This happened on Thursday. Okay, and then you filed your complaint that night or something, right? Yes, I went onto the city's website and filed the complaint. Uh, what had happened out there uh, was this uh, uh, a rules violation on the 18th green, right? And the and the marshal, who's a city employee, uh, drove his golf cart off and just. Up one side and down the other, just verbally as wild as he could, abuse this young man for what was close to being a, well, it was a rules violation, but it didn't damage anything. The kid didn't know. The young man's a private in the Army. He's golfed maybe four or five times. Yeah, what did he do? Because I'm not a golfer. Oh, yeah, he got, his, he got his golf cart a little too close to the 18th green. Oh, okay. He didn't go on the green. He didn't damage anything. I took pictures. Uh, but this man, this man made this young young man feel terrible. He just and all, and all the people in our group. Yeah, good thing you don't give me a golf cart because I don't know what I'm doing on a golf course. Yeah, well, what they, you know, this is the future. As these old fellows like myself uh, uh, are no longer out there golfing, you're going to need young young people to uh, go to these city golf courses, and that's that's their future customers. So, yeah, especially uh, you know, with with a not with a volunteer army now. I mean, yep. you know, geez, I mean, you got a kid that that's uh, that's doing something nice, and you know, right. And, and, and like I say, I, I have no problem with uh, with this with this uh, city employee correcting this young man, you know, and, and schooling him up on you know what the, was proper etiquette out on the golf course. But it really took advantage of a, of a youth, of a young fellow who, without him knowing it, is actually an eighteen year old who's recent high school graduate and also in private in the army and. He, he went way overboard with the way he verbally um, uh, made a rag, out, tried to make a rag out of this young man. Instead of schooling him up, giving, possibly giving him a, a first warning and telling yeah, him what and, the rules were. Right, you mean, you know, get a little corrective criticism. But, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll ask about it. If I can't find out any specifics or if they kind of snowball me, if you want to call me at home, like, in a couple of days, feel free. I'll give you my number or you can look it up. That'd be fine. Like I say, uh, the city has the information. They have they have uh, made some inquiries out to Downing, and I, I'd like to see them follow up on it. But uh, uh, I would love to have your number too, and I'll give you a call if, uh, if I don't hear anything yeah. the next day or so. I'll give you my ph phone right now. It's eight two five. Gotcha. Seven six zero one. Okay. Thank and you there, there's a message machine on there too. Okay. Yeah, thanks. And just say this is concerning the, the golf course incident. Gotcha. Thank okay. You very much. Have Thank a good you. Day. Yeah, getting back to, uh, oop, here we go. I love phone calls. Go ahead, caller. Hi, good, uh, good, good afternoon. Uh, hopefully you can answer a question for me. I'll try. Go ahead. Um, it's in regard to parking automobiles on grass. Ah, uh, the old bugaboo, yes. Yeah, uh, it, that just drives me insane. Where's this one? It's all over the city. I cannot believe it. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's uh, it's real prevalent up on, it's not the only place, but but I drive over East 38th a lot. And quit talking about East 38th. East 38th is a lot caught. There are people parking on grasses on every north, south. You're right. And you know what the rule says? The rule says that they are supposed to contact the city. Uh, there's The engineer is supposed to look at it. And I believe they are allowed to park on the grass if they pave it 
were covered with a material. Right, 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 right. But half of them don't do that. You're right, they're illegal, and we don't do a thing about it. Here's my question, and I like what you said at the last meeting about little things eventually go into larger things, and mm -hmm. that's what's wrong with the city. But here's my question. Is it against the law to park on your front grass? Uh, I believe it is, because when we asked... They said that you can park on it if you do the, if you get permission to like uh, gravel it or, you know, uh, what do you call it, put a blacktop on it. So then here's my question. Mm hmm The lay is on to the police department. That's me. Oh, it is you? Yeah. Beautiful. I'm talking to the right person. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I'm even confused whether, sometimes it's a code violation, sometimes it's a... It's a police violation. The police usually get you for uh, blocking the sidewalk, but generally code enforcement is supposed to be with the cars parking on the, on the grass. Okay, here's my question and suggestion. I called the non-emergency police telephone number. Right. I had two people wait on my block parking on the grass the same day, and my blood pressure just went through my... Mm -hmm. But, you know, code enforcement is absolutely no help to me. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to call the police non-emergency and just ask the question. And the cop said, it's not against the law to park on your front line. And that was the end of it. He, he told you that? Yes. So, if that is in fact true, that it's not against the law, but it is in fact a code infraction, here is a suggestion to our mayor. Have the code people in their cars have a form letter. And as they're traveling throughout the city, mm -hmm. it's not going to hurt a damn thing, and it won't cost a whole lot of money. Just take out one of those forms, put the address where they see the infraction, put it on the person's door or whatever, or on the windshield, and just say, do you realize you're in code violation? How the heck can that hurt anything? It doesn't. In fact, well, one night they act, well for a while, Mercyhurst was actually paying the city uh, a stipend, extra extra money to put a code man on at night, and his job was to go around and to eliminate the multiple cars parking on the lawns and the sidewalks, and that went on for about a couple months, but. They really didn't get into the spirit of it, and I think you're right. I mean, the problem is, is it, it's not illegal if it's done properly. But, you know, I don't think the police understand every rule. I had one the other day where a guy has a driveway that belongs to the city, and he can't get out of his garage in the back of it. And, you know, they're not even aware of some of the laws that are on the books, I think. But I'm going to check into that because that bugs me because we were told at the Neighborhood Watch that if they applied to have it done properly, they could park on their front lawn. But, you know, they have to look at the situation. Are they going to bug somebody for doing it once? Probably not. But if it becomes regular, no, I think that's bad. Other people on my block will leave their cars there for days on end. Yeah, and it's starting to look ratty. I mean, it's not... If it, they own a driveway, they're on street parking, and they have a garage. What the hell's wrong with these people? Uh, it, it, it is. Well, it's just like on my street. Everybody has a driveway, yet you still see par people parking on the street, you know, in wintertime. And they go, well, why? You know, the road ain't that wide to begin with. Well, anyhow, I, I know your liaison to the police department. Yeah, I'll find out. But I, that, that's a combination code police problem. But if they do it right, they can do it. They're giving out some information by saying, oh, it's not against the law. And, in fact, they're wrong. I think that needs to be addressed. Yeah, I'm going to find out, you know, I'm going to try to go down there now before I go home. And I have one other thing to t throw out at you, another suggestion. Like you said, there are so many ordinances, so many laws on the book. Why don't you guys, what, once a month, yeah. put a law that is no longer in use or valid or whatever, and get it off the book? Well, actually, the uh, next councilwoman actually tried that. That was... Uh, uh, Ruby Jenkins, husband, she went through the book one day and she actually did get a lot of them repealed. I think the way to do it is I think we're going to have to, I, I mean, this sounds like a, a cop-out. We probably need to hire, uh, maybe get some kids in the, in the intern program, like from Gannon or something, to come in here and spend a, a summer 
going through the books and uh, maybe going through see get some of the older ones and uh, try to get rid of them. I think that'd be a good idea. That's a good idea. You going to handle that? I'm going to try it. I'm going to ask if they'll do it because we talked about it before. There are companies that will come in and go through your codification books and try to find you know laws that have either been superseded or in violation of state law now or or just you know they got rules about streetcars when do we have any streetcars left you know what i'm saying yeah so i think that's a good idea yeah ruby tried it she actually uh she spent about a few months just sitting down there doing she had nothing to do uh that you know she thought that'd be a good project and she i remember she got a few of them repealed like leave it to a woman to get things done yeah well it's 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 a big job, but I think you know if we're gonna, here, you know they talk about having things for kids to do. That'd be a good job, you know. I'm going through the books, and you know just trying to find maybe give them a, anything that's before 1940 or something. You know, just get rid of them first, like. Yeah, maybe that'll quiet down that uh, Macadoo. Yeah. It's always uh, yelping about jobs for kids. Well, you know, I, I ride around town. I'm amazed how many places are looking for for kids. You know, for jobs. I mean, when we were when we were young, you had the gas station, and maybe the grocery store, and then McDonald's came in. But today, there's so many options for kids that, I mean, if you drive around town, you got everybody's looking for something. You know, uh, help or. Getting back to this idea of just having the code enforcement people having forms in their car already, yeah. and when they see something, just take care of it right then and there. That could that could. Take care of so many issues. Well, if you listen to Mr. Mursky and I, we, we argue all the time, but they have told us they are reactive, which means uh, they only react to somebody when they call them. I go, I can drive around town on my way back from church or my way from shopping, and I can see it. You know, and I don't even have to work hard at looking. You know, I'm looking around now, and I see couches out there, cars parking on there, uh, grass that's not cut. I, you know, I, I just came out of church Sunday, and the gentleman, he's going to give me a list. He said he's tired of looking at all this, you know, grass and all that. And, and, and then you, you bring up a good problem. Is these are the little things that become, all of a sudden you wake up one morning and the town looks like a like a trash heap, you know. I've got pigsty like it does now. Yeah, and, it, and it happens because you're, you're, it's it's kind of what I said, and, you, and you, I think you're hitting on it that when you see the one car, you got to get after it. If you don't, then there's two cars, then there's three cars, and then somebody doesn't cut their lawn, then pretty soon five people don't cut their lawn. Yeah, just like this woman up the street that I told you about on Ranked Avenue that had the rear sidewalk removed for three years now and still has the damn orange plastic fence laying on the ground. Tell me that's not a code violation. Trying to get them, trying to get those, I mean, I've been... I, I am frustrated when I hear that, you know, they don't have, well, they, whatever they have, they have to go out there and do their job. They have to, you know, even if they just start making a little dent here and there. Exactly. Well, anyhow, like I said, I hope that you mention something to the police and find out once and for all if it is uh, uh, a law that's being broken or not. Yeah, I've had some comments with them, but a couple of officers didn't understand a lot of the laws about it. And it there's so many of them, but... You know, what What they need to do is, before they say there isn't one, is to check them whether there is one, because... But here, here's the problem. None of our, well, I won't say none, but most of our police officers don't even live in a city. Yeah, a lot of our employees don't live in a city. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, I said that comment at the meeting, and I, do you want to know what's wrong with the city? That's that's a big problem. I mean... It is. It really is. I mean, when, when the people, and, and you know, like an earlier caller said, uh, your insurance wants to get their tax rate lowered. Well... You know, the taxes are being passed on to so few of us now that, you know, we all want relief. Hey, that one guy that spoke for citizens to be heard, he was, I think he was the last guy, mentioned something about uh, a city, elected city official using City Hall street address. Yeah, he, 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 uh, he, he, uh, he, he agreed to uh, tell the mayor's office who it was. It's probably the mayor. <laughs> uh, well, it, it, uh, it, I, I, I will tell everybody, all they have to do is look on the website unless it's been corrected. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> you probably will find out the truth. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. Here he is. It's something else. Yeah, my address is right where I live. I'm on the, they, they know where to find me. <laughs> uh, get on those code people. Don't. 
we don't, how are we going to change this from being reactive to proactive? It, it, well, it has to come from the administration. They have to. Uh, uh, for count, yeah. Then. Yeah, council does not. Uh, we can we can push, urge, cudgel, but under under the way the city is set up, the the mayor's administrative head, and I think if people are dissatisfied, they need to call his office and tell him. You know, and then I tell people file complaints through the code enforcement office and tell me you want a number. Tell me you want a number, a complaint number, and you know, give them the address and see what happens. Then you can call me and say, "Here's a complaint number," or you know, the day I called. Okay, that's good. That yeah. I know that. Okay. I, I, I tell people that you know, we tell them at the neighborhood watches too that, you know, force them. If if they don't do their job, then we can find out. You know, otherwise they go, "Well, I never got a call, like this and that." So you ask them for a number or a complaint number, or if they don't, say why. When I want to know what you're going to do about it. And then, you know, call the mayor's office and tell them we're dissatisfied, you know. I never knew that. You know what? You should announce that more often and to the public to know that, because I never knew that. Yeah, people, I tell people, don't complain to the paper and all that, you know. Do, that's your next course after. If the mayor don't help you and council don't help you, feel free to go to the media, you know. You can't tell me that this mayor can't go down to Andy, Andy's office and say, look, this is what I want you to do. I know I would. I would. I'd be so. I, I'm infuriated when, and I used this last year. I have a field next to my house. You're welcome to look at it. It took them six months to cut the grass last year. You know that that bordered my house. All they did was they cut the field, but they left the edges alone. This year they cut the edges, but the field is still high. Now, you know, is how could you sell your house if you had to? I mean, not that I want to move, but if I had to, how could I do it? I mean, people look at that and they go, you know, that, that's an that's a ugly field. Right, right, right. You know, people dump stuff in there. I got all, all, all Sunday, they had a, a builder dumping crap in there on a Sunday. Jeez. I mean, you know. What, you know, the, what floor has Andy Zimmerman on? Uh, fourth floor. Do you mean to tell me that on his way up to the fifth floor, he can't get off the elevator, walk down the hall and say, Andy, this is what I want you to target? Yeah, I, well, you know, it's, it's frustrating. If, if you listen, Mr. Mertzke and I complain all the time. I mean, we're involved in that 38th Street area, but it's all over the city. I mean, some uh, I, uh, Mr. McDonald took me for a ride. Yeah, you probably see him at the meetings. Uh, you know the gentleman that speaks all the time? Uh -huh. But he was right. He took me for a ride along 17th Street, and I was appalled. I really was. I'm saying, you know, there's still people who live here, and there's still citizens, but, man, it, this is what's all over the city. You know, it's... Yeah, it's like that one woman said, you know, it's almost like the city is go short of just saying, we don't want you anymore in this city. We want you to leave, and this is how we're going to go about doing it. We're just going to make your life miserable, make you live in a crappy neighborhood, and... So long. I think in the old days when people actually lived in their community, it was a little different. You know, you had workers that lived there, they didn't like it, so they called their bosses, you know. Yeah. And, you know, things got done because they, they had to live there too, and their neighbors would get all over them. Yeah. All right, kid. Take care. Hey, thank you. We, we're done. We're going off the air, but thank you for your phone calls and follow up with me. I love your comments. Okay, thanks. Bye bye. And with that, Mike has given me the high sign. We'll go take one more caller. Whoop. We lost him. Go ahead, caller. Heading Hello? Yes. Heading south. Oh, no. Heading north on 10th, on Downing, on 10th Street, on the southeast corner. Hold on a second. North on Downing, right? Yeah, the southeast corner. The grass is so high, you have to pull way out. To see if there's any cars coming over 10th Street. Oh, 10th and Downing, right? Is that what you said near 10th and Downing? Yes. I'll turn that in on my way out of, out of City Hall. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And with that, Mike has given me a high sign, and uh, I'm going to go over and celebrate the rest of my week with my Cavalier fans. Go ahead, caller. Go ahead, caller. Oop. 
Go ahead, we're off the air, though. As you leave, information, the city of Toronto, 44 councilmen. 44 councilmen. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching the Taxpayers Hotline Show on your own government access, Channel 9.